there is one last consideration from the point of view of hardware right which uh, this slide over here is actually from uh, uh, a presentation by mark horowitz in isscc 2014 it corresponds this data corresponds roughly to uh, i think a 45 nanometer technology but very similar trends will hold even today right there are some very interesting results over here what you can see is that okay forget about the 8-bit ad but a 32-bit integer addition can be expected to take roughly 0 0.1 picojoules of energy okay so this is a good way of looking at it rather than talking about the power consumption you can talk about the energy per transaction every month every addition every 32-bit addition will consume 0 0.1 picojoules on average right depending of course on the number of bits that flip from 0 to 1 1 to 0 etc the num actual number will change but on average it will be around 0.1 picojoules on the other hand a 16 bit floating point addition will be 0 0.4 picojoules right whereas a 32 bit floating point is 0 0.9 picojoules it's 9x of an integer addition okay Multiplication, on the other hand, is 30x of integer addition. Right? One way of looking at it is that, you know, it sort of makes sense that a 32-bit cross 32-bit multiplication is more or less similar to adding 30, 32 partial products. Right? So you can expect roughly a 30x uh, energy increase. On the other hand, floating point multiplication is not as expensive as we would think. Right? It is more expensive than integer multiplication, but not by too much. Right? It's not like the 9x uh, hit that you consider on floating point addition versus integer addition. On the other hand, you go to the column over here. Right? And this is where you see the real monsters as far as energy consumption nowadays are uh, concerned. Right? Every access from a 1 megabyte cache memory right, takes around 100 picojoules. That's like a thousand times the energy of one integer addition, right? And an access from DRAM is literally several thousand times the energy required for one addition. Which means that for a typical instruction, if you look at the energy breakdown, it turns out that the computation very often ends up being a very small part of the total energy requirement. Okay, And this is something especially nowadays when we are talking about design for low power and so on is something that you need to keep in mind. More than even the computation, you need to focus on the energy being consumed in the memory accesses and find out how to sort of optimize those in some 